and you had a vote in the Roman Republic. And so the colonists being inspired by the Enlightenment, they're like, we shouldn't have a monarchy. We should have a republic. And that's why it's called the American Republic, right? And so republicanism is a form of representative democracy. And we have been talking about this already, reviewing this throughout this lecture. This idea has been put into action through colonial feminism during the policy of salutary neglect. Right. So Don, do you remember what salutary neglect is now? Yeah. Can you explain it in your own words? When like, like the mother country is literally may see on like the child country as, as long, long as they keep making like money for them. As long as they keep making their money. And you were on point. You had a good guess. They were making their money through which policy? The economic policy that you guessed before you know it was mercantilism. Mercantilism. Right. Okay? And so a way to remember what representative democracy is, right? Think about <laughs> what Camila says is bars, right? What was the, the phrase that the colonists said about taxes? No taxation. Representation. No taxation without representation. Okay? And so that is what they mean. They wanted to be represented in the government, and they did not have that yet. Right? So here's a big one. Thomas Paine's common sense. Yeah. This will be a pamphlet, right? Like a short book that will be written by an upper class colonist named Thomas Paine, right? So his family immigrated from England over to the American colonies. But this will mark a big shift in this topic of the American Revolution, right? We all know that what's the main thing that the Americans are upset about during this time? The pro proclamation, right? So okay. that's an example. Proclamation, okay. taxes, no right? No representation. And so they're just all upset at the British government for ending salutary neglect, right? The conflict had already began, uh, and what was the key term for the beginning of the American Revolutionary War, right? Uh, you gotta remember. It's the place where the first shot was fired. Oh, at Hamilton. Remember, no, it was... No, I, I was like, like where's the American Revolution? Was it in the duel? It was two places, the name of the two places. It was. How was it like Hampshire? I want to say. No. You guess? What? One starts with an L and one starts with a C. Lexington and Concord. Okay. The, sh the shot heard around the world, right? So this conflict has already began, but we're, remember. We're learning about the ideological shifts in this conflict, right? And Thomas Paine, he's going to blame the king himself just instead of the British government. So parliament is the British government, and Thomas Paine will single out King George III himself, right? And make him the scapegoat or the main person to blame, right? Is that a loyalty? He's a patriot. A loyalist is someone who is loyal to the king. So you wouldn't be loyal to the king if you blame him, right? So this is the key part for common sense, y'all. The beginning of the notion of independence comes from Thomas Paine, right? Even though they've already started shooting at and fighting with the British troops, none of the previous founding fathers have called for independence. They just had problems with the British government. But now Thomas Paine says, you know what? The only solution is for us to become independent, all right? We will separate from our mother country because it is impossible to reconcile, all right? 
And so we'll see that maybe before some of the founding fathers, they were fighting and they were protesting because they wanted to return to this salutary neglect, all right? Things were good, all right? You're making money off mercantilism. You let us run the colonies the way we wanted to through our colonial assemblies. Why can't we go back to that? But Thomas Paine says, like, nah, you need to break up with them. Right? Oh, yeah. like, the yeah, yeah. There's no working it out. They're going to say this. They're going to say that. But no, the only solution is a clean breakup. And that's going to come from Thomas Paine's common sense. Right? We'll look at this document later on. But this is why this document is so important. Because most people think that... The, col uh, the colonists who participated in the Revolutionary War, they always wanted independence, but that's not true. Before this pamphlet, most of them still wanted to be part of the British government. They just wanted to go back to this, salutary neglect, right? But Thomas Paine is the one who calls for independence, and the Declaration of Independence will come by it, right? And so we're going to see how he convinces people through rhetoric and propaganda, right? He uses very inflammatory uh, words, right? Against the king, where if you heard it, right? Because remember, not everyone was literate, but if people are reading these in public squares during the protest. If you heard it, it might like rabble you, right? Just like people were inspired to storm the capital. Now people were inspired to break up with the British government. 